If I had to pick just one way to refresh a tired interior, it would be by repainting. I don't think there's a better way to get more bang for buck. Often when I talk to people about repainting their interiors though, they feel like this is a job that only the professional should do. A great paint job really just comes down to just a few simple things. Great prep, great product, and good technique. And I'm going to talk you through those now. So first up, you've got to take a look at the walls and see what kind of condition they're in. In older homes, it's quite likely that there are going to be some dents that need filling in. Often crack filler will do this just fine, or if there are larger holes, you may need to get a plaster in to repair these. Once that's dry, it's just a matter of sanding it back to get a smooth finish. It's also important to lightly sand the rest of the wall with a fine grit sandpaper. It only takes a couple of minutes to do a full wall. Then it's just a matter of washing away the dirt and grime by using sugar soap in a bucket of warm water and a clean sponge. Once it's dry, you can prepare the area that you're going to paint. If you're painting onto new plasterboard, you'll need to apply a prep coat first. Monster have a great three-in-one product, which is a primer, sealer, and undercoat in one. So that's suitable for any job you need to tackle, both indoors and out. Then it's time to do your cutting, and I always recommend getting the best quality paintbrush you can afford. This just involves painting around above the ceiling, in between your walls, and above your skirting boards. Basically anywhere a roll is not going to get to. The trick to doing this step well is not to overload your paintbrush. If the paint is too thick, it will leave streak marks. Then it's time to roll. The trick to rolling well is again, not to overload or underload your roller. So put a generous amount of paint into your tray, dip your roller into it well, and then work it back and forth over the ribs to get a really consistent coverage on the roller before you start working on the walls. I always use drop sheets as well to protect flooring. Start painting the wall around half a roll width away from the edge of the wall, and then paint up and down the wall, but not quite reaching the top or the bottom, because you don't want to get too much paint into the edges of the wall. When you feel like you've got enough paint on your roller, but not too much, you can roll all the way up to where you've done your cutting and all the way down as well. I work in about one to one and a half meter blocks at a time, always overlapping by about half a roller each time. Before moving on to the next one and a half meters of wall, I'll take my roller and lightly go back over the area that I went, which is sometimes called rolling off. And it just involves getting your roller rolling down gently, taking it off the wall, going back to the top, rolling down gently, taking it off the wall, and doing this over the whole area, overlapping the roller again by about halfway each time. What this does is it really smooths out the texture and it's the trick to getting a professional finish. In cooler weather, you may get away with doing a full small wall at once before going back and rolling off. But in Australia, it's often quite hot and the paint will dry too quickly. Once the second coat's dry, you'll be able to see it at different times of the day and judge whether or not you need to do a third coat or if two coats is sufficient. If you see any kind of shadows or splodginess or you can tell the difference between your cutting and your rolling, it's definitely a good idea to do a third coat just to get that really professional finish. If you'd like even more tips on how to paint like a professional, you can find lots of helpful videos over on the Monster YouTube channel.